It's a boy! Dreams rarely survive in the waking world. Nightmares, on the other hand. I'll keep the intro short. If you're here, like me, you're a curious cat wanting to know who would win a duel between Freddy Krueger, the notorious dream-invading slasher with a razor glove, and Dream of the Endless, the literal personification of dreams and a super powerful deity. Well, in this video, we'll explore just that, but I'll begin with detailing the powers and abilities of Freddy and Dream for the sake of clarity. If you want, you can skip to the third chapter of the video where I'll talk about their battle. And now, let's begin. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Freddy Krueger, the birth of a nightmare. Amanda Krueger was born in 1907 in Springwood, Ohio. At 18, she became a nun and worked at Weston Hills Asylum. In December 1942, she was accidentally locked in with 100 patients and suffered a traumatic ordeal. She later gave birth to Frederick Charles Krueger, Freddy. Unable to raise him, she gave him up to Mr. Underwood, an abusive alcoholic. Freddy's childhood was far from pleasant. In elementary school, he killed the class hamster and was bullied as the son of a hundred maniacs. He began self-harming with a razor and eventually used it to kill his adoptive father in self-defense. Freddy's harsh upbringing shaped the dark path he would follow. Freddy Krueger is like the ultimate nightmare roommate. You can't kick him out because he lives in your dreams. He's a dream bender extraordinaire, doing with dreams what airbenders do with air, but with a lot more sinister flair. In the dream world, he's basically got a god complex. Omnipresent, omnipotent, and downright unstoppable, especially if you fear him. That fear is his power source, letting him crash your dreams uninvited and rewrite the script however he pleases. He doesn't just invade your dreams, he remodels them. Freddy can pop out of nowhere, change his shape and size like a horror-themed Mr. Potato Head, and redecorate your dreamscape into a personalized hell. He's the twisted interior designer of nightmares, customizing each torment to match your deepest fears and insecurities. Want to be a TV star? He might just introduce your face to a television screen violently. But what happens in your dreams doesn't stay there. If Freddy slashes you in your sleep, you'll wake up with real cuts. He's the worst kind of sleep paralysis demon, the kind that leaves bruises. This means he can actually kill you while you're catching Z's, turning your beauty sleep into a permanent nap. Freddy's methods are as creative as they are cruel. He uses his infamous clawed glove not just for style points, but as his primary tool of terror. Remember Debbie from the movies? She was terrified of bugs, so Freddy turned her into a cockroach and then squashed her. Taryn had a history with drug abuse, so he gave her a lethal overdose in her dreams. He's not just stabbing wildly like his slasher pals Jason or Michael. He's tailoring each nightmare to maximize psychological torture. Unlike those other guys who are all about the quick kill, Freddy enjoys playing with his food. He thrives on fear and takes perverse pleasure in making your demise as agonizing as possible. He's the cunning predator who turns your own mind against you, proving that sometimes sleep isn't the safest place after all. So, if you ever find yourself in a boiler room with a guy wearing a striped sweater and a fedora, maybe skip the nap. Sweet dreams! Freddy Krueger is the king of bad dreams, and he knows exactly what scares you. With his psychic and telepathic abilities, Freddy can tap into your deepest fears and darkest secrets. Imagine a serial killer who not only wants to harm you, but also knows your most embarrassing moments and biggest anxieties. But where does Freddy get these nightmarish powers? Enter the three ancient dream demons. These creepy floating skeletal snakes first slithered onto the scene in Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Brought to life with animatronics by Jim Fowler and his team, these demons are on a mission to blur the lines between dreams and reality. To wreak havoc in the real world, they need a wicked human helper. And who better than Freddy, a notorious child murderer? After a vengeful mob burned Freddy alive, the dream demons offered him a deal unlimited power in the dream world in exchange for doing their dirty work. Freddy eagerly accepted, 
gaining the ability to invade dreams and turn them into deadly traps. And just when you think he's gone for good, the dream demons keep bringing him back like a bad habit. Freddy's family ties add another layer to his twisted tale. In Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, we meet his estranged daughter, Dr. Maggie Burroughs. Determined to stop her father, she dives into his chaotic mind. The dream demons aren't too pleased and taunt her along the way. However, Maggie uncovers Freddy's human memories, forcing him into the real world where he's less powerful. She ultimately defeats him with a well-placed pipe bomb, sending the dream demons packing. Speaking of transformations, Freddy doesn't just stick to his striped sweater and fedora. One of his most bizarre forms is Super Freddy from The Dream Child. Picture a beefed-up comic book-style villain with a gray cape and a lightning bolt on his chest. Gone are the trademark glove and scars. Instead, he's got muscles on muscles. When comic book fan Mark Gray tries to fight Freddy using his own superhero persona, Freddy ups the ante by becoming Super Freddy, easily overpowering Mark and turning him into paper. Freddy also has a nasty habit of collecting souls. In Dream Warriors and the Dream Master, he absorbs the souls of his victims, which boosts his powers. Each soul makes him stronger and more dangerous in the dream world. It's like he's collecting trading cards, but way more sinister. Eventually, his victims fight back from within, leading to his temporary downfall. Shapeshifting is another one of Freddy's party tricks. Throughout the A Nightmare on Elm Street series, he morphs into all sorts of forms to mess with his victims. From a hall monitor to a giant snake, he uses these transformations to catch his prey off guard. He even turns into inanimate objects, like a television set, to deliver his deadly punchlines. In some films, he manipulates his victims' bodies and turns them into cockroaches or puppeteering them with their own veins. Gross. Anyway, now let's talk about Sandman, after which we'll dive right into their fight and discover who would win. The Extraordinary Life of Dream from the Sandman, the Cosmic Weaver of Dreams Once upon a time, specifically when creatures started dreaming, Dream came into existence. He's one of the Endless, a family of cosmic beings who personify fundamental aspects of the universe. Think of them as the ultimate siblings, each with a unique job until the end of time. Dream's parents are Time himself and Night, but let's just say they're not winning any parenting awards. They've drifted apart and aren't too concerned with their son's fascination with mortals. Early in his existence, Dream noticed that Abel seemed a bit bored hanging around with his sister Death. So, being the hospitable sort, Dream whisked Abel away to the Dreaming, gave him the House of Secrets, and made him a storyteller. But Abel got lonely. Telling secrets to yourself gets old. So Dream thought, why not bring in his brother Cain? And thus, Cain moved into the House of Mystery next door. Family reunions ensued. About 80,000 years ago, after their sister Despair was murdered, <laughs> don't ask, Dream and his endless siblings visited the necropolis to lay her to rest. The locals there had lost their zest for the job, and even laughed at the Endless when they requested the proper burial rites. Not amused, Dream revoked their charter, causing the place to crumble. A new town, Litharge, got promoted to the new necropolis. Lesson learned, don't mess with cosmic beings. Fast forward to 10,000 years ago. Dream, going by the name Kaikul, caught the eye of Nada, a queen of a glorious African city. They fell in love, despite knowing that romance between mortals and the Endless was a cosmic no-no. Thanks to some meddling by a sibling desire, they couldn't resist. The next morning, Nada's city was destroyed, and in her grief, she took her own life. Dream, nursing a bruised ego, condemned her soul to hell. Not exactly boyfriend of the year. In AD 6, Dream did a favor for the Roman god Terminus by visiting Emperor Augustus in a dream. Augustus wanted to prevent Rome from becoming an eternal empire. Dream's advice? Spend a day disguised as a beggar so the gods wouldn't notice his scheming. Clever move, and it worked like a charm. Jumping to the late 700s, the Caliph Harun al-Rashid summoned Dream by threatening to unleash some nasty jinns. Dream, not thrilled about being strong-armed, heard him out. Rashid wanted to preserve the magical wonders of Baghdad forever. Dream agreed and tucked the city's dream version into a bottle, leaving the real Baghdad as just another city, albeit with legendary tales. 
In 1389, Dream and his sister Death overheard a man named Hob Gadling boasting that he'd never die. Intrigued, they granted him immortality. Dream decided to meet Hob at the same tavern every hundred years to see how that was working out for him. They kept this date in 1489 and 1589, during which Dream also made a deal with a struggling playwright named Will Shaksberg. You might know him as Shakespeare. Dream offered him endless inspiration in exchange for creating plays that would inspire humanity. Their centennial meetings continued. In 1689, Hobb was down on his luck, but still not ready to kick the bucket. Dream began to understand the resilience of humans, or at least this one. In 1889, Hobb suggested that they met not just out of curiosity, but because they were friends. Dream, being the aloof cosmic entity he was, scoffed at the idea and stormed off. Denial isn't just a river in Egypt. Then came June 10, 1916. An occultist named Roderick Burgess tried to capture death but ended up snagging Dream instead. Oops. Dream was imprisoned in a fancy glass bubble for over 70 years. During this time, the world experienced all sorts of sleep problems. Some folks couldn't wake up, others couldn't sleep, and dreams went haywire. Meanwhile, Dream's powerful tools, his ruby, helm, and pouch, were stolen and passed around like hot potatoes. In 1988, a careless scuff in the magical circle allowed Dream to escape. Free at last, he wasn't in a forgiving mood. He cursed Burgess's son Alex with unending nightmares. On his way back to the Dreaming, Dream bumped into Marco Polo lost in the soft places, zones where time and space get a bit wonky. Dream helped the explorer find his way home. Good deed done, he returned to his realm, only to find it in shambles. His loyal librarian, Lucian, was pretty much the only one who stuck around. With his kingdom in ruins and his tools missing, Dream realized he had some work to do. He summoned the three witches. They go by many names and are as cryptic as they come for guidance on retrieving his lost items. With their not-so-straightforward hints, Dream set off on a quest to reclaim his belongings, rebuild his realm, and maybe learn a thing or two about humility and friendship along the way. But what about his powers? Imagine a being who not only rules over dreams, but is the very embodiment of them. That's Dream for you. One of the seven endless, and perhaps the universe's most powerful insomniac's nightmare. As the personification of dreams, he holds absolute sway over sleep, dreams, nightmares, and yes, even those pesky sleepless nights. First off, Dream is immortal. Not the lives forever unless someone finds his weakness kind of immortal, but truly everlasting. Age and disease, not his cup of tea. If by some cosmic fluke an endless is destroyed, their essence doesn't vanish. It passes on to another, ensuring their role in the universe continues. That's how Dream's powers found a new home in Daniel Hall after Dream's own demise. Teleportation is a breeze for him. Need to pop over to Earth, take a stroll in the Dreaming, or perhaps visit Hell for a quick chat? Dream can open portals between realms as easily as you or I open a door. Speaking of doors, he can unlock them with his mind. Telekinesis is just one of his many tricks. Dream is also a master of disguise, thanks to his shape-shifting abilities. He can alter his appearance and attire at will, making himself more relatable or intimidating depending on the audience. After all, not everyone reacts well to a tall, brooding figure in a cloak. Despite his lean frame, don't underestimate his physical prowess. Dream possesses superhuman strength, capable of lifting and tossing around beings much larger than any human. And endurance? He once spent 70 years imprisoned without a snack or a sip of water. When he finally got out, he was only slightly peckish. One of his signature moves is making people fall asleep faster than you can count sheep. With a simple gesture or a sprinkle of dream sand, he can send anyone into slumberland. This comes in handy when escaping prisons or dealing with bothersome guards who forget that napping on the job is a bad idea when the Lord of Dreams is around. Entering people's dreams is child's play for him, literally. He can slip into anyone's subconscious without them noticing, observing, or even interacting with their dreamscapes. It's no wonder people were warned not to doze off around him. Dream can also track anyone or anything across realms. Lost your helm to a demon in a crowd of thousands in hell? No problem. He'll find it with minimal fuss. Creating dreams, nightmares, or even new ideas is all in a day's work. He can implant thoughts into minds or curse someone with an endless loop of waking from a nightmare, a fate worse than Monday's. Being the ruler of all dreams grants him cosmic awareness. 
Dream knows all stories ever told, and even those yet to be spun. He's like the ultimate spoiler alert for the entire universe. He feeds off the dreams of others, literally absorbing the stuff of imagination and even the food within dreams. Illusions are another tool in his vast arsenal. He can craft projections so lifelike that they can interact with the physical world. For Dream, the line between reality and illusion is more of a suggestion. When it comes to healing, he's got it covered. Wounds and injuries mend swiftly, keeping him in top form for his cosmic duties. Perhaps one of his most formidable abilities is reality manipulation. Within the dreaming, he can reshape the environment, conjure objects, or create entities to serve him. His absence weakens his realm, but his presence strengthens it exponentially. He also wields control over light, creating and manipulating it as he sees fit. And let's not forget his telekinetic talents, moving objects or people with mere thought. As a master of magic, Dream can cast spells and even distribute portions of his power to objects like his sand pouch and dreamstone. If someone really gets on his nerves, he can curse them to suffer eternal nightmares. So it's best to stay on his good side. Dream Duel Freddy Krueger vs. The Sandman in a Battle for the Dream Realm In a duel between Freddy Krueger, the notorious dream-invading slasher with a razor glove, and Dream of the Endless, the literal personification of dreams, the winner seems pretty obvious. Yes, we're pitting a mischievous nightmare demon against a cosmic deity. Let's see how this epic clash might turn out. Freddy Krueger operates within the dream world, where he turns nightmares into his personal playground. His abilities include manipulating dreams to torment his victims, shape-shifting into various forms to deceive or scare them, and wielding a twisted form of immortality. As long as people remember and fear him, he continues to exist. He can read minds to exploit personal fears and gains power by consuming the souls of his victims. Occasionally, he can even affect the physical world, especially when someone pulls him out of a dream. However, his powers have limitations. He thrives on fear. Without it, he's considerably weaker. His influence is mostly restricted to the dream realm, and he's vulnerable when pulled into reality. On the other hand, Dream of the Endless is the very embodiment of dreams themselves, apart from being an uber-powerful cosmic deity, of course. His abilities are vast and cosmic in scale. Dream holds absolute control over the dream realm across the entire universe. Being immortal, he exists indefinitely and can't be killed by conventional means. If an Endless is destroyed, their essence passes on, ensuring their role continues. When Dream died, his powers transferred to Daniel Hall. His reality manipulation within the Dreaming allows him to reshape environments on a universal scale. He can alter his appearance at will, teleport effortlessly between realms, including Hell, and possess omniscience within dreams knowing all stories ever told or yet to be spun. Dream wields powerful magic, capable of casting eternal curses, and is invulnerable to mortal constraints like hunger or fatigue. He can create and enter dreams at will, influencing or observing without detection, and he feeds on the dreams generated by all beings. Now, if Freddy attempts to challenge Dream, he might try to invade the Dreaming, hoping to use his special tactics, manipulating the environment, shape-shifting into frightening forms, and exploiting fears. He might attempt to read Dream's mind to find any weaknesses. Unfortunately for Freddy, Dream is the undisputed ruler of the Dreaming. Freddy's manipulation skills would be like a child's crayon drawing compared to Dream's multi-million dollar masterpiece. Dream doesn't experience fear in the human sense, so Freddy's main power source, his victim's fear, would be ineffective. Dream's control over the Dream Realm is absolute, leaving no room for Freddy's antics. He could easily reshape the environment to trap Freddy, nullify his abilities, or simply erase him from existence within the Dreaming. While Freddy can read minds to some extent, Dream has cosmic awareness of all thoughts and stories. He would anticipate Freddy's moves before Freddy even conceived them. Freddy gains power by absorbing souls, but Dream oversees all dreaming beings and could prevent Freddy from accessing any additional power. Dreams could even expel Freddy from the Dreaming altogether, leaving him powerless. Freddy's abilities are potent against vulnerable humans, but they're no match for an Endless. Without someone to scare, Freddy loses his edge. Dream doesn't fear him, cutting off Freddy's main power supply. Outside of Dreams, Freddy is even more vulnerable. If he were foolish enough to confront Dream in the waking world, assuming that's possible, he'd be completely outmatched. Dream doesn't need to sleep or eat, and he can't be harmed by physical means. 
whereas Freddy has been defeated by resourceful teenagers. Dream has various strategies at his disposal. He could imprison Freddy within a nightmare of his own design, giving him a taste of his own medicine. Imagine Freddy trapped in an endless loop where he's the victim instead of the predator. Dream might erase Freddy's existence from the Dream Realm, effectively ending his influence altogether. Given Dream's complex nature, he might even choose to reform Freddy, stripping away his malicious intent. A fate worse than defeat for someone like Freddy, whose identity is tied to causing fear and pain. In this cosmic mismatch, Freddy Krueger is out of his league. While he's a terrifying force against unsuspecting teenagers in a small town, he's merely a shadow compared to Dream's universal presence. Dream doesn't just play in the Dream World, he is the Dream World. Freddy would be like a mischievous guest trying to vandalize a house where the house itself is alive and watching. Freddy might try every trick in his glove, but against an omnipotent being who can rewrite the rules of reality with a mere thought, he's toast. Dream's mastery over the Dream Realm is unparalleled, and his powers dwarf Freddy's in every aspect. Even Freddy's ability to shapeshift and manipulate reality within Dream's pales in comparison to Dream's cosmic capabilities. Dream could nullify Freddy's shapeshifting, leaving him in his original form, powerless and vulnerable. So, in the Battle of the Nightmares, Dream would undoubtedly come out on top, perhaps with a slight smirk at the audacity of Freddy's challenge. Freddy, realizing he's no match for an Endless, would likely find himself trapped in an endless loop of his own worst nightmares, courtesy of the true master of dreams. The irony of Freddy being tormented in the very realm he once controlled would be a poetic end to his reign of terror. Marvelous Verdict In conclusion, while Freddy Krueger is a formidable foe within the limited scope of human dreams and fears, Dream operates on an entirely different level. As the personification of dreams, his power is both infinite and absolute. Any attempt by Freddy to usurp or challenge Dream would be swiftly and effortlessly thwarted. It's not just a battle between two Dream invaders, it's a contest between a mere manipulator and the sovereign ruler of all dreams. Freddy might be the stuff of nightmares, but Dream is the architect of them, making this a one-sided battle with a predictable outcome. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.